What is up everyone? My name is Joseph Hadaway and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's been a rough year so far in the stock market with the S&P down about 12% year to date. Of course, that is accurate at time of recording, which is currently late April. But you know, if you're invested in good companies, solid funds, that real downturn really shouldn't bother you. If anything, welcome to discount. Now, if you see me on Twitter and Instagram, and if you haven't, make sure to drop me a follow. You probably know me as primarily as an index fund investor who specializes in index fund ETFs. And for good reason, that's most, if not all of what I invest in, it's what I recommend for others as well. So with that said, in this video, I'm gonna break down my top five ETFs for the second half of 2022. And if you got some dry powder, it might be time to put it to work in the market. A couple quick things before we get started, make sure to subscribe, like the video, hit the bell, and let me know in the comments down below your favorite ETF to invest in. And as one last quick little note, none of this is financial advice. Make sure before you make any investment decision to do your own research, your own due diligence, and consult with a professional. And with all that out of the way, let's dive right into it. So let's start off with my favorite ETF of all time, VTI, or the Vanguard Total U.S. Stock Market Index. Why do I love VTI? <laughs> Easy. I like owning the entire U.S. economy. VTI, of course, is a Vanguard ETF that tracks every single firm listed on the U.S. stock exchanges. So basically what I'm saying is this fund isn't going down until the U.S. economy and government collapse. And if that happens, I've got a lot bigger things to worry about than just my investments. A question I get a lot is, so what does VTI offer that like say an S&P 500 ETF doesn't? Easy, more diversification across more sectors and more companies. VTI owns the entire S&P 500 and then a lot more. The good, the bad, the ugly, you're getting every little bit of it. In truth, the two indexes are very highly correlated, but VTI provides more exposure to small and mid cap stocks giving it a slightly higher risk rating, but of course, higher risk, as any investor will tell you, could potentially lead to higher return. And then just, you know, extra icing on the cake, like most Vanguard ETFs, VTI has an extremely low expense ratio of only 0.03%. And with that 24% return in 2021 and some decent enough dividend payments, I'm not gonna sell VTI anytime soon, maybe not even ever. Moving on to the second ETF on this list, that's VT, or the Vanguard Total World stock market ETF. VTI is great, but sometimes it just isn't enough. VT offers the international diversification that VTI lacks, and VT has a piece of every single publicly traded stock in the world. That means for every share of VT you buy, you're getting diversification across more than 9,000 publicly traded companies across the globe. Like I said, for VTI, it'd be extremely difficult to shut down the entire US economy. But the whole world economy, that's basically impossible. And if it goes to zero, once again, I've got way bigger problems than what I'm investing in. Another question that I get a lot is, you know, why do I put money into VT if international stocks have lagged US stocks historically? Well, a few reasons. Number one, I really don't like putting all my eggs in one basket, even if that basket is the entire US economy. Also, you know, US has been on top for a while, but I don't feel that trend's gonna go on forever international economies are rising and it's only a matter of time until I wished I invested in more than just the US market. And you know, again with VT, you've got that Vanguard expense ratio of only 0.08% as they're famous for with all of their ETFs and a really solid dividend yield for a growth index. So once again, I'm not selling. So let's talk about income for a minute here. I love index funds, but I get the biggest boost of serotonin every single time a dividend payment hits my brokerage account. And dividends are my favorite form of passive income because they're really the ultimate set, forget, no work, no work required to get started or keep going. I mean, let this be a lesson to everyone out there. It pays to be an owner. And for that reason, I added Noble, N-O-B-L, or the ProShares S&P 500 Dividend Aristocrats ETF to my portfolio. You may be asking yourself, you know, what is a dividend aristocrat? Well, a dividend aristocrat is one, any company that is part of the S&P 500, and two, has increased their dividend payout for at least the last 25 consecutive years. So to me, that alone puts Noble ahead of several other dividend ETFs out there, because I trust the payout every year, and these are some solid companies they're investing in. But of course, that's not the only reason that I love Noble. Despite being down in 2022 so far, just like the rest of the market, it's still up more than 62% in the past five years. That is way ahead of several other dividend ETFs out there. It's kind of like getting two income streams from the same investment when you get both the dividend payouts 
and the capital appreciation. And of course, this all goes to say that I trust Noble more in the long run than I trust some other dividend ETFs out there. I mean, it's well diversified. It has solid year over year growth. It's in a proven index. And it's been steadily paying and increasing its dividends for almost 10 years now since inception. This is another fund that I don't think is going to sink anytime soon. So now that we've gone over a few broad based indexes, let's start nailing down the sector. Well, this one's still kind of an index. It's also kind of a tech sector fund in a lot of ways. And I'll explain in a moment. Right now we're talking about Invesco's QQQ Trust or ticker QQQQ. So QQQ tracks the 100 largest non-financial companies traded on the NASDAQ exchange. This of course makes it heavy and large established tech companies that you've definitely heard of such as Apple. Microsoft, Amazon, and Tesla, just to name a few of its largest holdings. Of course, with tech companies, there's you know a little more risk than an established blue chip company, though the argument can be made that companies such as Apple and Microsoft are nearing or if not entirely at blue chip status. But that's another talk for another video. Like I mentioned though earlier, it comes with a little higher risk and as any investor will tell you, that means there's a potential for higher return. And that's been true with QQQ thus far. At a time of recording over the last 20 years, QQQ has returned more than 900% in capital gains alone, not counting dividends. That beats the S&P 500, just as a note. Now in a lot of ways, QQQ is a tech index fund and it you know, behaves as such, being a little more volatile than the overall market index but also, like I said, you're getting those higher returns as well. I don't think many people argue with me when I say the world is only beginning, going to be getting more online. These tech firms are gonna keep getting bigger and bigger. So QQQ is gonna remain a cornerstone in my portfolio. So the final ETF on this list is a kind of high risk, high reward by design. And that is the Vanguard Growth Index Fund ETF or VUG. This fund focuses solely on high growth stocks, companies, and industries but it does focus a lot on large cap growth stocks. At time of recording, VUG is up more than 400% since its inception in 2004, and has been averaging really solid returns over the past several years. Recent years have been great, with returns upwards of 20% in each of the last five years, of course, starting in 2021 being the final year and working backwards. Of course, with any growth fund, this ETF is more susceptible to market risks and downturns and indexes such as the S&P 500 ETF. You've seen it this year, growth stocks are taking a hit, s and is down 12, a lot of your growth stocks are down even more than that, and VUG is no exception. But if you're investing for the long term like I am and you believe in this fund like I do, I'm getting it on a discount and you can too. I really don't have a lot to say about this ETF. It's another Vanguard, so you know, of course high growth, low fees, and it definitely still has room to run in the future. VUG has been a great addition to my portfolio, and when I started writing this video, I knew I had to include it here. All right, so those are my top five ETFs for the second half of 2022. And of course, those are also cornerstones in my portfolio, so I'm not stating anything here that I don't also invest in. But I do want to say again that this is not financial advice. This is just my opinion on ETFs that best fit my goals as an investor. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of other solid ETFs and companies for you to pick from to grow your portfolio, or that'd be great additions to you know your portfolio you already have. Never make any investment decision without your own proper due diligence or your own tax implications, goals, risk tolerance, time horizon, you name it in mind, you know, consult a professional when necessary. So do you want to learn more about ETF and index fund investing? Check out a link down in the description below for one of my favorite resources on index fund investing from my good friend, The Wealth Coach. This is an affiliate link, but I've read and I recommend this book to everyone because I do thoroughly believe in the content there. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter and Instagram at jhadawayfc. Also, if you want to hear me interview successful investors, entrepreneurs, and business owners each week, check us out over at Work Hard and Tire Early. I'll put the link to all of that in the description below. So also, you know, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell, comment below again, let me know what your favorite ETF is, and check back next Friday for a new video.